Hey everybody, we're gonna do a uh, garden update today. Looks like, um, I don't know how Father's Day is gonna go, so I figured I would get one, done, get one done today. Wanted to show you what's been going on, and at the end of the video, I'm going to put a harvest in there because we've got a lot to harvest, and I've been harvesting a lot. There's been an explosion of uh, maturing, especially in the uh, tomatoes, so wait till you see this. Or at least wait till you see the harvest at the end. So let's take a look. The uh, Texas russet potatoes um, from 321 are still hanging in there. I am going to continue to milk these as long as I can. I think we're at day 91 today, so technically I could get an early harvest, but I'm gonna continue to wait until these guys die completely off, which you can see they're starting to do. Obviously, they're not doing too well, but you know what? If I I got 93 days on the potatoes last time and it was a pretty decent harvest. So if I can try to get a little bit extra on these, like uh, if I can get them to 100 days or 110, that'd be ideal. If I don't, again, as soon as I harvest them, you'll be seeing the harvest video. The Yukon Golds, I, uh, I planted these with barely any eyes started. And as such, there's nothing going on in this pot still. So we're waiting on those. Those were planted 531. The other text of the regular russets these suckers were um, not planted until 610 so really only 10 days ago but you can see because the eyes were about an inch to two inches long they didn't waste any time coming above ground so we've got probably too many in this bucket I have five potato seeds with two to three eyes on each um, so we'll see how this goes but you know what I will stack it up and we'll see what we can get out of here. It'll be my biggest potatoes grown in a container yet. So with the extra space, I'm hoping to get a good harvest. The sweet corn series I have uh, posted on YouTube so you can check that out, see how those are doing. All right, there's a couple of mystery tomatoes in here have gone to flower. Um, not much action on these just yet, but there are two of them and they're in that little container. So kind of a small container, but just as an experiment, want to see how they do. The grape tomatoes in the container have got several red potatoes on them um, and they seem to be doing pretty good hanging in there despite the heat. We do have some dying foliage but I'll trim those off probably tomorrow. Wanted to point something out. The birds have officially left me alone guys. So I put a couple of cute scarecrows in the yard mainly for decoration. Um, they didn't do anything for a couple days with the scarecrows. As soon as I put this, this reflector tape and it blows in the wind a little bit, as you can see, obviously it's not windy right now, but I put these reflector tapes up and since I've done that, the birds have left everything alone, everything. So you know what? I'm a fan of a roll of reflector tape, hang it so it moves a little bit. Birds stay away, it seems. Sweet peppers are doing pretty good. We've got some larger sweet peppers growing over here. We've got, uh, what else do we got here? We've got some beginnings of some sweet peppers right here. Lots of flowering going on. And that's about it for now. Oh, we've got, we've got a sweet pepper down here. I didn't even notice it. Um, so that's good. This is the bell pepper for sure. Um, everything off it died once I trimmed that big one off or fell off, but it's coming back. We'll see what it produces here. I'm excited to, uh, to have another bell pepper plant. And I've started several more indoors. The uh, rosemary is hanging in there, as well as the garlic chives. They're doing pretty bad, but you know, this heat, uh, those are just an experiment anyway, so we'll see how they do. Check out the purple jalapenos, man. They uh, have really started to turn red, as you can see. They start off this really dark purple color right there and uh, we've got several new ones coming in so I'll be harvesting these as well since they're all turning red and I heard that that's when they get their maximum heat and maximum taste so looking forward to it the um, thyme and the oregano is okay you'll notice a hole right here guys I caught a rabbit trying to make a nest down here he tore it up pretty good I lost a third of my oregano and I lost the uh, well I didn't lose much of the time it just shocked him a little bit but I put the reflector tape up and the rabbit has now ran away because he came back a couple different days in a row starting to get a red uh, 
I don't know if it's beefsteak or what it is. It's a big one on this first mystery tomato. And uh, got several other really good sized tomatoes coming in. So it's doing really good. Really good. Explosion of red on the grape tomatoes, guys. Wait till you see the harvest. I've, got, I've harvested now over 200 of these tomatoes. And just for uh, looks here, I mean, they're gorgeous. They taste sweet. They are juicy. Um, they're everywhere. I am so pleased with these. Matter of fact, I started those uh, sweet sensations and they've sprouted about two inch seedlings, which I won't show this time. But um, I think we're gonna stick with some heirloom next year tomatoes and we're gonna stick to uh, mostly grape tomatoes of some sort, whether they're regular grape or whether the sweet sensations, I don't know, but they're awesome. So here's my tomato plants, my red on the vine tomato plants. Not doing too bad. As you can see, there's several just about harvestable fruits here. I may leave them on. I, I've been pulling them off early because of the birds, but now can, I can let them go fully red. So these can, actually can wait until probably tomorrow to be harvested. Maybe a couple taken off today, but we don't need to rush them anymore and we can leave them on the vine and not leave them on the counter for four or five days to redden up fully because I have, well, I don't want to jinx it. Let me knock on some wood here, but I have a very slight to minimal now bird problem, whereas before I had a huge bird problem. I have done a series on my Bush Lake green beans and my sugar snap peas, so look for that. Still absolutely nothing on the chocolate habanero. I do have flowers on this in a lot of places. Um, if you just look, there's flowers on this quite a bit. They're even over here, but I cannot get any fruit set Tasmanian habaneros will set fruit I've harvested five of those so far we got another one that's right there on this middle big plant and several more on the one that had given me the first five so Tasmanian habaneros are doing good those uh, chocolate habaneros absolutely nil for right now look at that red big gym right there that sucker's coming off today I will be eating that probably tonight fantastical got a few other um, got kind of a deformed uh, big gym but I'm gonna leave it on there got another big gym over here growing in got a couple more down here growing in you know it's weird these big gyms aren't as big as the first couple or at least the one that's mature is only a I'll get a measure tape to it but probably about five or six inches whereas the first ones were seven and eight so it's not as big but you know what I'm fine taste is good it looks good can't wait to harvest them to all the fingers, man, these are just producing mass amount of peppers. These are the ones I'm gonna be pulling off today because they're red. I had pulled everyone that was red or orange or yellowing off of this one. They all matured on the counter after a week. And this one now, now that, I've, now that it doesn't focus on trying to keep 20 peppers alive, is starting to turn green again and come back to life. So I'm happy about that. It was really struggling with all those peppers on it. I mean, this branch right here on this one is just loaded with peppers. So it'll be glad to let go of those since it's pulling it down. My uh, orange scotch bonnets, see if I can get some good looks here. My orange scotch bonnet peppers have quite a bit. You can see a nice pack of three down there. Got a larger one over there. Several of them on this branch right here. We've got a whole bunch more on here. Look at all those peppers. If we go down even lower, we've got peppers down there. And we even have peppers, a whole bunch of peppers on that plant down there. I don't know if you can get a good look at it, but quite a bit. So the orange scotch bonnets are doing just fine. The um, red savina, it had produced that first pepper. And again, kind of like the uh, chocolates, it drops its flowers, they don't set. We've got a few flowers. I sprayed hormones on the flowers, the tomato and vegetable hormone on it. It, it seems like it's holding its flowers longer but as soon as they start setting a fruit, they fall. So we'll see what happens on that. Still no red savina fruit set after the original one. The uh, serrano peppers are doing good. Got several on this plant. It's uh, last time I looked, I think it had 12. 
They're not red yet. We like them better red even though they're good green. So I'm gonna wait. They're not ready to harvest. We've still got three Fresno peppers on this plant ready to go as well as a green one right there. So they're doing good. We'll harvest those three today. And on the plant back here, guys, that was almost dead, as you remember, I cut all the fruits off it, all the immature fruits, and it really, really helped. It's already persistent on setting a whole bunch of more Fresno peppers as we speak. So that's good. I may, I may um, cut them off one more time or I may just cut off all the flowers that it has currently and just let the four or five fruit sets that it has go. We'll see what I do. But the cool thing is guys, we've got quite a bit going on in the garden. A lot of harvesting to do. I'm really excited. And oh, and I'll show you while I'm at it. I haven't shown my composting in a while. It's doing really well. I mean, it's broken down. I added some, um, I guess, weeds in here. Not really weeds, but just some crabgrass, I guess, and uh, I need to break it up a little more. But the uh, the compost is uh, breaking down really good. So it looks like it's gonna be pretty good stuff. It's still got another probably month. I've gotta get in here and break up some of these big chunks of leaves and uh, other stuff, paper. And there's a lot of red worms in here though. So it's doing good, gonna break it down and we'll be able to use it, hopefully. By the end of the season or when i finish the season i'll be able to treat the beds next year with it so i will pause the video and i'll come back and show you a harvest here at the end and uh wow what a savior here guys i tell you the best thing i did was buy this reflection tape because the birds have stayed away uh knock on wood anyway i'll be right back with my harvest thank you all right, guys, so here's my harvest from today. We got four red on the vine, three Fresno peppers, three jalapeno, purple jalapenos, the uh, New Mexico Big Jim. We've got 14 of the red Jawala fingers. Some were not all the way ready, but to me, they're close enough. We got 28 grape tomatoes, and you can see some of the bigger ones, and some of the smaller ones. I only took the most red. There's probably another 30 that are two-thirds ready to go but I'm gonna let them sit for another day and just to give you an idea while I'm letting them sit in the last week and a half last week we've got a whole tray full of red on the vines I don't know how many are in there just took them out of the fridge and check this out guys probably a hundred grape tomatoes in here fully red ice cold delicious I mean they've been rinsed already Mmm, mmm, absolutely fantastic, mmm, so anyway, I gotta rinse these off, then I gotta get them put where they go, and the peppers are gonna be used in the next couple of days, probably with steaks and stuff tomorrow, thanks for watching. So like and subscribe if you can and um, support me. Thank you.